Okay, so I just wanted to do a video of me crocheting homeless mats. This is the last of my ball. It'll probably go in, into the end of the mat. See the hook is right here. The mat ends right here. So I have a few more stitches to go. And then it'll probably go about halfway down the mat to about here. Each mat is three feet across and about six feet in length is your goal. Three feet by six feet because three feet gives a person enough room to sleep on it. And six feet makes it so that those that do have a bigger height can still use it. So there's There's a place that takes homeless mats where it's, it's in Mesa and it's off of Country Club and Rio Salado, that's the main crossroads. It's a humanist church which I'm not really a part of a humanist church, but they have some of the same values as I have of helping other people. And they do a lot of work for the homeless, like they do homeless mats, like this one that I'm doing. As you can see, it's about it's about three feet across and about three feet high. Can't really fit all of it in the screen, but I'm about halfway done with it. In the last videos for homeless mats, I showed you how I make the balls. And I just wanted to show you a little bit on how I make the mats as a little tutorial. So, I am a music major, so most of the things that I do are music related, as you have seen on my YouTube channel. I do, I learn different instruments, and I play the tuba mainly.
As a music education major, I have to learn as many instruments as I can. At least the main instruments like, like woodwinds. We have woodwind methods, which covers flute, clarinet, B-flat clarinet, and E-flat alto saxophone. And then they're supposed to have brass methods. Well, woodwind methods too, which covers oboe and bassoon. But right now they don't have a class for that at Mesa Community College. So I've taken woodwind methods one, I've taken string methods one, which covered any string instrument you wanted to play, which one of them was bass, or you could play cello, or violin, or viola, but I chose bass because, you know, I play the tuba, and I love the sound of any bass instrument, whether it be bass flute, bass clarinet, bassoon, English horn is somewhat of a bass instrument. I love the sound of the cello. My dad plays the cello. Well, he used to play the cello. Yeah, so I love bass instruments. So I did woodwind methods one, string methods. I'm doing brass methods this year, this semester. Brass methods one, which goes over trumpet and French horn, which are the two high brass instruments. French horn is one of the hardest instruments to play. It ties with oboe. Well, any type of oboe, whether it be the oboe that we have nowadays, or the English horn, or the viola de... or the oboe de amor, which is a cross between modern day oboe and the modern day English horn. And I took percussion methods, which is covers all percussion instruments, covers snare drum, bass drum, timpani, drum set, and any keyboard percussion instruments like vibraphone, xylophone, marimba, and then
and I have to take guitar methods, which goes over guitar, how to play guitar, and that's basically all the methods classes that I have to take at Mesa Community College, unless I take string methods one, which goes over violin and viola. Um, I have to take four music theory classes, which goes over the theory part of music. The third and fourth one are the hardest because they can cover contemporary music and new age music, which contemporary was like in the composers like in the 1900s were contemporaries. They brought in New Age to music, and then there's New Age music. Um, which covers the composers of the 21st century as in the 2000s and newer. And yeah, so this semester I'll be taking Music Theory 3, which is supposedly the hardest music theory class I'm going to learn if it is, <laughs> which it probably is. And then I'll be taking Oral Perception 3, which is sightseeing and voice leading, well, ear training, not voice leading, which is going to be pretty hard. Anyway, as you can see, my life kind of revolves around music. But I also like reading books, which I have been doing on Under the Greater Phoenix Audio Library, well, Digital Library. I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks lately. So, I wanted to show you how I crochet. Once you get started, all you do is you push it through the top stitch that connects it to the other stitch. You do a loop over it, 
you pull it through, it'll do a loop on top on the hook and then pull it through, do another loop, and then pull these two over. I'll show you again. Tighten this, the loop that I just did, the push it through so it looks like this. Pull it through. Do another loop. Pull this one over and this one over. Anyway, oh, I'm almost out of this ball of yarn, well, plarn, that I'm using, plastic bag yarn. So, after I get done with this stitch, I'm going to show you how I connect two plarn balls, plastic yarn balls. Here's the end. I grab another ball from a bag. Put it on the floor, take the new piece, this one's white, this one's gray, put the white on top of the gray, pull the gray underneath the white. What you're basically going to do is you're going to create just a simple knot. Like this. You want the knot to be tight enough that it doesn't come apart. The knot so tight that it just like almost rips the other piece of plarn apart. And put that there, another stitch done. Now, as you see right here, this is the end of one of the plarn balls that I finished. As I tied the other one to it, I created these bunny ear effects all over the, all over the mat. So I take my knitting scissors. I usually use kitchen scissors for this, but Knitting scissors will work too, just these kids' scissors that I have. And there's one down near the bottom. I usually leave a little bit left on there so it doesn't totally come apart.
I cut it close enough that it doesn't like come unraveled if it comes apart. But I'm going to do that to the rest of these and then I'm going to end the video. I usually knit or crochet while I'm doing something else, like listening to something else. I either listen to some music or uh, a or a podcast, or some scriptures. I'm religious. I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We were formerly known as Mormons, but if anyone asks us if we're Mormons, we are to answer if you mean Church of member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, then yes, I am a member. I live in Mesa, Arizona. in the Phoenix metropolitan area. The nearest cities to me are Gilbert, Scottsdale, Tempe, Chandler, Phoenix, which is the capital, and Fountain Hills is about half an hour away, We're not too far away. I am currently working on a few arrangements. One is based on an arrangement on Mars by Gustav Holst, a German composer who composed a series of works called the planets over all the major planets. I'm checking the back now to make sure that there's none on the back that I missed. And the other is uh, classical music from compo from commercials work called, you may know this one, Mozart's Queen of the Night Aria by, well, by Mozart, 
arranged for woodwind quintet, which consists usually of a flute, oboe, clarinet, French horn, or saxof or alto saxophone, but usually French horn, and bassoon. The Mars arrangement that I'm working on is for brass quintet and harp. Harp instead of brass quintet and piano, which it was originally arranged for. So, that's it for this video. This is what the knot looks like again. This is the crocheting hook that I use. It's from Walmart. It came in a pack of three. Because you can't just get one. They want you to buy three of them. This one is 11.50 millimeters, so 11 and a half millimeters, and it's a size P, is the size that you were looking for, for crocheting with um, with Plarn, because it's a little bit thicker than yarn. So, Thank you for watching, if you've watched this long, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.